In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I want to focus on the officium for this Mass. The officium of this Mass is a beautiful articulation of the faith, a beautiful articulation of the desire of the human heart, or the heart, the way the human heart ought to be, as it... Uh, as it gazes upon or contemplates or meditates upon our Lord. And as the translation we have here in, this, in, the, in our program says, look, look thou upon me, O Lord, and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. See my objection and my labor, and forgive me all my sins, O my God. To thee, O Lord, have I lifted up my soul. In thee, my God, I put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Now, how often does this express the very cry of the penitent soul in their day-to-day -day life? How often do we cry out to God and say, God, have mercy on me. Make my works fruitful. Help me. I keep crying to you. And sometimes I hear you. Sometimes I see you present, and yet sometimes I don't. And as I preached last time about those parts in our heart which are unconverted, this is the prayer of resolution for that. If we want to have a resolute heart, that is seeking that continual conversion, this is how we must approach the Lord. This is the type of prayer, the type of disposition that can make our life fruitful, can turn us towards God and the things of God, so that we can love God rightly and love the things and the people who He loves as He loves them. Because that is what we're going for in the Christian life. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. There's a lot of there's a lot of dualism sort of approaches that we always have to avoid in the Christian life. On the one hand, we have to be concerned about moral rectitude. But on the other side, we have to be very careful not to be legalists. On the one side, we have to realize our absolute nothingness before God. But then on the other side of that, realize that God loves each and every one of us as if only I was created. And the dignity that we each have, that God has put into us by his love. We have to work hard. But yet, on the other side, we have to avoid the temptations of Pelagianism and not believe that it's simply our own actions that make things fruitful, but that we must rely constantly on God's grace. But yet, at the same time, we can't be quietus and simply say, it's only God's grace. And if I pray hard enough, everything will be okay. These are all these balances that we have to make in our day-to-day -day lives and find the proper harmony between all of these separate dispositions so that we can find ourselves in the heart of the gospel, free, constantly crying out to God, asking for his assistance to make our work, our lives, our faith, everything that we do fruitful, responding in love to him because this is what we are about. We are about that response of love, as St. John reminds us, we are able to love God because he has loved us first. And so everything that we do must be thought of as a response in love. As we say in our moral theology classes, sometimes fear is enough, but love is better. We're going for love. Fearing God, being afraid of the temptations, being afraid of the sin and the, and the results of the soul 
that is steeped in sin and hell, these are all good things to fear. But our fear is not what we desire to drive us, hopefully. What should be driving us is our love. And this prayer, look thou upon me, O God, and have mercy on me. This is the response of a child to his father. Begging for help. Asking for understanding. Approaching a loving father, a father who is going to be merciful, who is going to help. There's confidence in this prayer. It's not simply placing ourselves in an obeisance before God. Rather, this prayer assumes fulfillment. We have hope, we believe that our God is the type of God that when we pray this to him, that he will respond, that he will fulfill our need, that he will grant us that mercy, and he will make our lives fruitful. Is this the kind of God that you believe in? Is this the kind of God that you believe in? Reflect deeply. Because whenever there's a temptation to see God merely as a judge on a throne waiting to smite you for every little transgression, if that's the primary image that you have in mind about God, this prayer, pray it and realize that this is not the whole story of who God is but rather that God is the lover of your soul and desires to give you everything that you need to attain to happiness, perfection, peace, freedom, reconciliation, and joy. And this is what we can place our hope in. And this is what we can look forward to. And this is who we should strive to be infused with love, loving as God loves, so that we might be pleasing to him, seeking after his mercy, consolation, and strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.